Press. Thank you for your support, solidarity, and for honoring our invitation to this press conference on the state of our dear nation. The resource center for human rights. The resource center for human rights and civic education crisis has been closely observing the developments across the country since the beginning of 2021. Knowing from many experiences that the year 2020 was extremely challenging and difficult on many fronts, Nigerians prayed and hoped for a better day in the year 2021. Unfortunately, for the vast majority of love suffering citizens who look up to leaders and those in authority to share the cause towards relief and reprieve, the actions and inactions of those in position of power have been, to say the least, most disappointing. Crescent notes with utmost dismay that despite the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which, which in its fourth wave continues to destroy lives, businesses, and livelihoods, Politicians across all tiers of government continue to inflict harsh conditions on the ordinary people. As this stands across all strata of political authority, impunity has replaced democratic decision making, while those holding political power carry on without any consideration for social and economic justice. Abuse of citizens' rights, attacks on dissent and free speech have all become the order of the day. From the local government to the state, and even to the federal level, citizens can hardly find examples of conduct that fall in line with principled, purposeful, and people-oriented leadership. All across the land, impunity and reckless use of political power is the name of the game. Similarly, the unaccountable use of public funds, particularly the so-called bailouts without recourse to the demise of transparency and probity, has become the norm. There are many examples of these clear cases of reckless and self-centered use of political power by people entrusted with it. For the current political leadership, power is not for the good of the collective, but for narrow, self-serving, and anti-people ends. These factors, which border on failed political leadership, are responsible for current crises affecting the country. Security situation in the country. Crescent observes that most potent existential threat facing Nigeria today is the unending wave of insecurity. Like never before, Nigeria's territorial integrity and its internal security have been severely compromised by relentless groups of terrorists. In many cases, these outlaws not only kill, displace, or inflict other forms of harm on Nigerians, they are now taking over swaps of spaces to further incubate their terror cells. Before our very eyes, our country is literally burning and there appears to be no concerted and sustained efforts to put out the fire. There appears that on the watch of the current government, human lives no more have any meaning or sacred value attached to them. On a daily basis, fellow citizens are decimated, bruised, maimed, and killed all over the country without any consequence whatsoever. Barely a week ago, the incidents in Sokoto State, where the citizens traveling in a bus were set ablaze by terrorists, goes a long way to illustrate how bad things have become. The Sokoto incident is a metaphor for the impunity with which terrorists and criminal guys operate across the country, 
taking lives at will without any comprehensive, effective, or sustained response from law enforcement agencies. At the last count, a serving commissioner in Karsina State, a member of the House of Assembly in Kaduna State, as well as other less known citizens across the country have begun down. Several highways across Nigeria are no longer passable because they have been taken over by the criminals. It is equally clear that the criminals who engage in these dastardly acts have no fear or respect for the capacity of the state to arrest, prosecute, and bring them to justice. This is so because the criminals have been Seen, have seen that the state so far lacks the resolve to go after and bring them to book. As such, Nigeria has now taken on the status of a vast killing feed, where the blood of citizens is routinely shed. The tragedy is that the government, which should defend the lives and property of citizens, has continued to project weakness because it has woefully failed to summon the courage to act beyond routine platitudes and lamentations. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, lives, livelihoods, and economic opportunities have also been dealt a severe blow by the chronic state of insecurity. Citizens have no life, have no have to live with the many perils in a country where life, limb, and property can no longer be guaranteed by the government, which has the primary responsibility of ensuring the security and welfare of the people. Things have become so bad that farmers can no longer engage in their occupation without the fear of being killed by armed assailants. For traders who travel across the roads in the country, it is a case of some being lucky to escape the dangers on the road, while many others unfortunately are fully victims and they never live to tell their stories. There can be no mistaking the fact that a government that cannot guarantee the safety of lives and the free movement of citizens from one part of the country to another has completely lost all its essence, value, and legitimacy. Given the enormity, enormity of the situation, the only way out is for the government to arrest and expose the backers and sponsors of terrorist gangs, whom the government claims it knows. Government should also take a critical look at all the recruitments into the military, police, and Department of State Security Service, and other security agencies to be sure the right people are in charge of running Nigeria's security architecture. Finally, the government should immediately declare a state of emergency in parts of the country which have witnessed the most horrendous atrocities against innocent citizens. Evoking emergency powers will signal a fresh resolve to tackle the existential threat of insecurity, just as it will enable the government to summon all the required human and material resources to restore its authority in the most affected parts of Nigeria. Crasset believed that the current half-hearted approach of dropping a few bombs on terrorist outdoors and then leaving them to continue their rampage on communities is not far-reaching enough especially given the current scale of the problem. The economy and its impacts on citizens. Good governance is about responding to and alleviating the fundamental economic issues affecting citizens. In recent times, the state of the Nigerian economy has been a source of utmost concern for citizens. The inflation rate has gone beyond control leading to the astronomical rise in the cost of living. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, the consumer price index, which measures inflation increased by 15.40% year on year as at November 2021. This, according to the NBS, is 0.51 percent point higher than the rate recorded in 2020, which stood at 14.89%. Data from the NBS also shows that the composite food index was 17.21% in November 2021. The NBS data makes it clear that the rise in the food index was caused by increases in prices of bread and food series, fish, food, product, potatoes, yam, and other tubers, 
oil and fats, milk, cheese and eggs and coffee, tea and cocoa. So you can imagine what is left. The skyrocketing inflation rate explains the high price of several basic commodities. It is so bad that the bag of rice now sells for between 30,000 and 32,000 naira. The price of a bag of cement now hovers around 5,000 naira with the likelihood of further increase, especially around the new tide. 12 kg of cooking gas, which used to sell for between 3,800 to 4,000, now sells for between 9,600 naira and 10,000. The prices of many other basic commodities are up, and the government is also talking of hiking the pork price of the premium motor speed, which is also known as petrol. When citizens in other parts of the world were getting reprieve from their government due to the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, Nigeria has gone none. <coughs> With the lowly minimum wage hardly being implemented in several states, Extreme poverty is now the lot of many latitudes. Little wonder the government itself declared recently that 109 million Nigerians will be, living, will be living in poverty by the end of 2022. For Christ's sake, the critical step goes beyond declaring that many more citizens will be living in poverty next year. What is the government doing to drastically reduce the number of citizens who would find themselves in poverty? Crescent believe the starting point is to put as many Nigerians as possible back to work. Government needs to stop being aloof while the citizens suffer. This it can achieve by drastically cutting down on wastages in government due to corruption and mismanagement. Government should also respond to the astronomical cost of basic commodities by mandating its economic team to come up with measures which could stabilize the prices of essentials like cooking gas, food stores, healthcare, and building materials. Shrinking the civil streets. Crescent also notes with concern the increasing shrinking of the civil space in order to strengthen the voices of plot land activists and human rights campaigners. Attacks and threats against journalists and human rights activists have intensified all through the year. Even in cases where the state is not directly carrying out the attacks against citizens, activists and journalists, there is now an emerging trend of mobilizing talks and street urchins to inflict harm on those who insist on invoking their right to demand accountability from the government. The other day, talks were mobilized to attack the publisher of Sahara Reporters, Comrade Omoyo Shore, and as the assault was going on, the law enforcement officers looked the other way. Krasia condemned this resort to cruel tactics to intimidate, harass, and silence voices of dissent and advocates of good governance. Krasia knows that the tricky space is also taking its toll on the anti-corruption program of the government. A ready example is the ongoing prosecution of Falkland anti-corruption crusader, Mr. Olare Waju Sura, chairman of FEDA, by the Office of Attorney General of the Federation. Mr. Sura's only offense is that he worked tirelessly to assure those behind the looting of the Nigeria Treasury through the Malabu oil block deal, which the former Attorney General Adoke was fingered are held to account, not only within Nigeria but also in other foreign jurisdictions. Prasad also knows the recent detention of renowned investigative journalist Mr. Fisayo Soyombo, whose only offense is the fact that he exposed unbridled corruption in the construction of police transit camps in several states. In a similar society, Suraj and Soyombo will be declared and will be celebrated as national heroes who took the difficult step of patriotically putting the interests of the country before them by exposing <coughs> every rush as of looting of the public treasury. The reverse is of, of course the case in Nigeria, where it is the people who expose wrongdoing, 
that are persecuted are wounded. Why those who breach public trust and abuse their office for private gain are fettered and celebrated by the government? Christ unequivocally condemns the use of state institutions to intimidate and harass anti corruption crusaders. We call on well meaning citizens and civic groups to continue to speak up in defense of these innocent activists and journalists who are being targeted, not because they run afar of the laws of the land, but because they use their God given talents to demand transparency and accountability in the use and allocation of public resources. Towards the 2023 general election. Notwithstanding the myriad of challenges in the polity, 2022 presents another important opportunity for Nigerians to work towards overhauling the polity using the instrumentality of the 2023 elections. Given the fact that the off cycle elections conducted so far have been blighted by voter apathy and low participation of the electorate, it is important to reform Nigeria's electoral process before the 2023 general election. As such, President Muhammad Buhari must rise to the occasion by asserting to the Electoral Act Amendment, which the National Assembly has passed and transmitted to him. Krasad is not unaware of pressures from political cliques within the ruling or progressive Congress, APC, to shoot down some provisions of the amendment. Specifically, the surreptitious moves of the so-called progressive governors' forums to take out provisions related to direct primaries in the amendment are undemocratic and do not represent the interests of the Nigeria electorate. Crasset calls on the president not to cave in in the face of these pressures because they are driven by self-interest and not by patriotic and nationalistic objectives. Crasset also calls on citizens, especially the youth, women and people with disabilities, to brace up to use the electoral process to put in place leaders at all levels who would work for the interests, welfare and security of the people. Crasset commends the United States President Joe Biden for hosting the Reset Democracy Summit, which sought to provide a new direction for democracy and democratization across the world. After the turbulent years of the Trump presidency, when the government of the people for the people and by the people was seriously undermined, it is reassuring that President Biden is reminding leaders around the world that while democracy is not a perfect system, it presents the most participatory vehicle for the governors of any country. Crisis similarly applauds the commitment of the U.S. government to provide support to critical pillars of the democratic process, particularly the free press and the work of civil society organizations. In conclusion, as 2021 comes to an end, Crasset is grateful for all the support it has received from its various partners to enable it to carry on its work of advancing the cause of democracy, human rights, and accountable governance in our dear country. We thank all our journalist friends, fellow women activists, good governance advocates, and millions of Nigerians whose commitment to democracy, human rights, and accountable governance has remained unwavering despite the myriad of challenges. If those responsible for taking our country to its current state, where life is brutish, nasty, and very short, are not prepared to take a day off, it is important for those of us who believe the country can be salvaged to triple our efforts. We believe, therefore, that given the plight of millions of our fellow citizens and the damage bad governance is inflicting on them, activists and human rights defenders cannot afford to go on any holiday. Trusted as a platform of active citizens <coughs> campaigning for democracy, human rights and accountable governance is convinced about the need to constantly engage the public discourse, not just to draw attention to the issues, but to prefer effective solutions. We thank you for your rapt attention, and we wish you 